Um, you would have seen Tony Lockett come in as a, oh, as a yeah. young fella. Yeah. Fairly shy sort of kid. Wasn't very, it? Introverted. Yeah. very introverted. Very introverted. And this is why he got into so much trouble with, you know, with the press and that, because he liked to be left alone. Yeah. yeah. With people like myself as nobodies and all that, he was great. You know, that's that's who you wanted to be with. But he was very, very introverted. You know, very shy, very shy, uh, and a great football brain. Oh, geez, he was a good footballer. Not only not only was he a great forward, but he was a great football brain. When Kenny Sheldon was coaching us, uh, the chap was was doing the running for him at the time. He said uh, one Saturday, uh, Kenny put the forwards under Plugger, the backs under Spud Frawley, sent them in under somebody else and that. And uh, I happened to be down there, I was down there and he said, have you heard Plugger talk? I said, no. He said, go down and listen to him. Well, he was absolutely fantastic with that. Where to run, you know, how to lead, if the wind's blown, how to, what to do, and all these technical things about playing the forward line, you know. He wasn't just a player that took a strong mark and kicked a goal. He had a real good football brain, plugger. He's a good blower. I spun his talking to him the other day. He rang me the other day. Not interested in football now. I said, how are you going, plugger? He said, Kenny, you'd be lucky if I watched two football matches a year. You know, I said, what, the dogs? And he said, oh, if you hear the dogs and a bit of cattle. Because he's got four daughters and never had any sons. Mm. But um, no, he's still going all right. So he, he rang you? How often do you speak to him? Oh, well, he rang me because my wife died. Yeah. And um, he, uh, he rang me because we, I, was, I was very good, very good mates with Plugger. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. When, when I was head trainer and um, he had bad, had trouble with his chest and um, uh, the doctor, um, uh, White, um, what's his name? Rowan. Rowan. Rowan had taped him up, see? So Rowan came at me, he said, oh, look, I want you to take that tape off Plugger's chest. I said, why don't you take it off? He said, no, you take it off. You know? So I said to Plugger, I'm going to take the off, tape off your plug. He said, don't you hurt me, you old bee. I said, ah, oh, it won't hurt you. I said, it's a knack in it. I said, look, you won't even feel it. I said, oh. So I'm peeling it back, I'm holding the skin, I'm peeling it back because he's got a hairy chest and I'm peeling it back until I got a handful of it, and I went, rip, and ripped up. He said, oh, you old bastard. And, and, and uh, Rowan said to me after, he said, you're the only one in the club would have got away with it. He said, that's why I got you to do it. He said, you're the only one in the club that would have got away with that. I ripped the, I ripped the plaster off. I conned him, told him I wouldn't hurt him. No, he's good, he's good.